Mick McQuaid here again with the last, the sixth and last video covering chapter one of our textbook, R for Data Science. And uh, we're going to start out, so this is coordinate systems, and we're going to start out um, with a standard presentation, and then we're going to um, use chord flip to flip it. So there, so this coordinate systems are complicated but we don't use them too much. We, we basically stick with the Cartesian coordinate system most of the time. So there aren't too many things that we uh, can actually do with this, but uh, we're going to go over a few and be introduced to some that we won't really use in the course of this book, but are just good to know about. Okay, so here is a standard. Um, and at this size, it's fine. If I were to shrink this down, uh, these um, class names would be impossible to read, and that's the way they're presented in the book, and so consequently we're going to flip it. And if we do it this way, we can compact it quite a bit without, the, uh, without the, these words becoming difficult to read. So uh, that's one aspect of the coordinate system. Another coordinate system besides the Cartesian coordinate system that we could use is a geographic coordinate system. And actually, I don't know if this will work. Let's see what happens. Uh, so I have the, the maps package installed. And as a result, this is working. But you might have to install the maps package. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is create a map here of New Zealand, which is the, uh, the birthplace of the person who wrote um, ggplot2. And it, it may, it, I don't know how familiar you are with geography, but it may be obvious to you that this map is very distorted. So what we're going to do is use um, a chord, instead of chord map, we're going to use chord quick map to make this look more realistic. So this is a little bit more what New Zealand actually looks like. Um, but we're not going to really cover maps in this book. Um, we could potentially talk about maps more during the course. I think it kind of depends on um, students and their interests in what uh, particularly like what your final project is going to be for the course. But this book doesn't cover maps. Uh, although it's easy, you can see it's easy to, to make maps in, in uh, ggplot2. Okay, now I mentioned previously, and, I'm, and I've written it out here, that uh, a ggplot is an object, so you can use the assignment operator, which is the um, less than sign followed by the hyphen with it. Um, by the way, you can also use a reverse assignment operator, which would be a hyphen followed by a greater than sign, so I could turn this assignment around and say ggplot uh, is assigned to bar. I have bar over here, although that would be awkward because of um, the plus sign here. So I'm not sure. I, I wouldn't want to do it in this particular case. I guess I would. I would uh, put the. Uh, I guess I would do it right here. Here's where the the uh, assignment operator would go. But it's like an assignment operator, like an equal sign in uh, C or any language that's a derivative of C. Or I shouldn't say it's a derivative that, that follows the C conventions. Um, so in this, we're assigning it to the identifier bar, and then we're going to reuse that object a couple of times. And what we've been doing until now is relying on a side effect of the creation of these objects, which is to display them as they're created. When I use the assignment operator, though, that side effect vanishes, and I have to name the object as a separate command to R in order to display it. So in other words, when I run this command here with the assignment operator, it's not going to automatically display this, uh, this GG plot. This is a diamonds plot. This is one that we've seen uh, before. Okay, so we've created this, but we um, are not um, displaying it. In order to display it, we have to name it, and we're going to name it with the coordinates flipped, 
first. So this is a sideways bar chart. And I could have done it if I had just said bar by itself. In fact, let me do that. Um, so I'm going to change this to now display it three different ways. So here is a uh, bar chart. Here's a bar chart with the coordinates um, flipped. And then a coxcomb plot, which is a, uh, a polar uh, coordinates plot, similar to a pie chart in a way. So um, we can change the coordinate system after we've created. So this is, is like kind of the final layer in the grammar of graphics, being able to uh, to uh, flip the, the coordinate system in some way. And the textbook informs us that coordinate systems are probably the most complicated part of ggplot2, but we don't use them that much. Here's, here's the example with the box plot, and you see here that it's been shrunk to the point where looking at it with this coordinate system is difficult. And here is the distorted map of New Zealand and then the more uh, accurate um, I say more accurate because obviously the earth is not flat, so this isn't exactly what it looks like. This is a projection. And uh, then finally the, uh, the sideways bar chart and the coxcomb plot. Okay, turn a stacked bar chart into a pie chart using cord polar. So how did I do this? I think I did this. Um, Oh, okay, and so I did it wrong too. So I did it, all I did was this. And I got a coxcomb plot. I happen to like this one. I think this is a, actually better than the, uh, than the pie chart, which I'm gonna do next. And I got this from the online solutions. And let me just add, oh, I think it's Jeffrey Arnold, is this. And so this is um, a more uh, more of a, a traditional pie chart, but it does divide the uh, the colors up a little bit. So I, I actually prefer the coxcomb plot, but this is a, a better example of what the exercise is asking us for. Okay, exercise two. What does labs do? Read the documentation. So we can just say question mark labs modify axis, legend, and plot labels. So if you think back to the grammar of graphics um, and think back to uh, Bertin's theory, uh, these are very important um, aspects. And so let's, um, let's make sure that we use these. I think I have some examples here because I think one of the other questions does this. So let's see, what's the difference between chord quick map and chord map? So this is an, an interesting point. Let's look at the um, uh, documentation for chord quick map. So they both project a portion of the earth, but this one um, preserves straight lines. Chord quick map preserves straight lines. And so consequently, it's much less computationally intensive. And it is more, it looks better. It, it's, it's more um, accurate, let's say. Uh, for smaller areas closer to the equator, but um, it's easier to do. It's easier on your computer um, if you're if you're running a, an old, uh, you know, or limited computer. You'll find it less computationally intensive. Okay, question four. What does the following plot tell you about the relationship between city and highway miles per gallon? Why is cord fixed important? What does geom abline do? So here's the uh, here's the plot. Let's let's actually run this. And what we see here is that there is uh, absolutely a linear relationship between city mileage and, and highway mileage. And if we jittered it, I think we would get the same the same thing. Um, and then what are we what are we asking? What more are we asking about this? Why is chord fixed important? So let's look at it without chord fixed, and uh, we'll see why it's important. So here it is without chord fixed.
Now I've also jittered it here so you um, you can see that the uh, linear relationship holds. Um, but without chord fixed, this line has gone off the 45 degree line. So there is a one-to-one -one relationship between, you know, there's a, a uh, correlation between these two variables that follows the 45 degree line. And now we're, we're off the 45 degree line. This AB line puts a line that we can specify by default it's 45 degrees. And it's... Um, it's no longer 45 degrees because we did not say chord fixed. And we can find that out by taking a look at chord fixed and taking a look at geom abline. Okay, and then that's that for, um, should I, is there more I should, well, you can look at these. Uh, on your own. Um, so that's that for chapter one. There is a short section at the end of chapter one uh, about the layered grammar of graphics, which we've already covered, and so uh, I'm not going to cover that short section, but I think I'll do a short wrap-up um, slideshow uh, format video uh, to end this chapter with. So other than that, we're done with the chapter, and uh, I thank you very much for your attention. And goodbye.